Hey there everyone, my name is Waffles the Asian Yen Bear and I play One Piece in Japan. Recently on this channel, we've covered two of the main three decks that dominated the OPL5 metagame, Blue Black Sakazuki and Yellow Anel. However, today I'm here to talk about the most aggressive of the trio, Mono Purple Luffy. Mono Purple Luffy aims to ramp up their Dawn quickly, drop big threats like 9 costs Kaido, and maintain momentum through good Dawn management. This deck uses a variety of generally good purple cards that benefit from the early dawn boost your leader gives you. That means that this deck list can be pretty flexible, so that makes this deck the most budget friendly of the big three. Additionally, this is not too difficult of a deck to learn, so I'd recommend this for beginners. The hardest part is just mastering when you should use your leader's effect. For those who don't know, Luffy lets you add an active dawn, but you have to add the top card of your life to your hand. This helps get the deck going quickly, but it does make you more vulnerable, as you don't have other ways to add that life back. So, if all that sounds good to you, then I'm here to give you my version of the deck, along with some tips and tricks for how to handle each matchup. Now, like I said, the deck list is very flexible, but there are a couple cards I'd say are a requirement, as the deck functions so much worse without them. First off is 4 copies of the 5C Blocker Kid from OPO5. This is really important because we make use of a good handful of Dawn Minus skills and having them out allows the Dawn Minus skill to actually work as a bonus since he just adds the Dawn back active. Next you'll need 4 copies of the 7C Kid from Starter Deck 10 as his Dawn Minus skill boosts your leader's power by 1000 until your next turn. This is a big deal in a lot of matchups and it's what helps you have the advantage versus Red and Purple Luffy. I'd also put 9C Kaido from Starter Deck 4 in this category. He's the big boss drop of this deck, and I run him at 3 copies. The rush skill helps for finishing games, and that 10k attack is huge for keeping pressure on your opponent. But that's pretty much it. From here on out, I'll try to mention some substitutes wherever possible for the rest of the card. So let's start with the blockers. First, I'm running 4 copies of 5c Queen from starter deck 4. I know he's really expensive in the west, so if you need to replace this, I'd go with Mr. 4 from OPO 4. You miss out on the draw effect from Queen, but otherwise you still get a 5c 6k blocker that can boost himself to 7k with his Dawn Minus skill. If you still can't get that, then Jinbei from OPO5 is also a 5c 6k blocker, but you're not going to really be able to use his skill very much. I'm also running 3 copies of Wire from Starter Deck 10, which I know is kind of an uncommon pick, uh, only being run in about 2% of the Mono Purple Luffy decks in Japan, but I found early on that this deck struggled a little bit with aggressive decks as they could usually get in one hit before I was able to drop the 5c blockers. However, wire being 3c means you can pop him in on your second turn without needing to go second and use your leader skill. Additionally, we do make use of his skill a lot, which allows us to cycle through cards we don't need in our hand, and get to our Captain Kids and Kaidos a lot faster. The issue with this would be against Sakazuki decks, as he is a prime target for Houndblaze, but we really don't need to worry too much about that, since we can just choose not to use that in the Sakazuki matchup. The benefit you get from this card is drastically underrated by the community, and I really think 3 copies is just the right ratio. First up is 4 copies of Ulti and Page 1 from Starter Deck 4. This is one I would really recommend. You can still get away with not having them, but Ulti's effect allows you to Dawn minus 1 to drop Page 1 onto the field 2, so you're getting 2 characters for 4 Dawn. That is really helpful for some early pressure, but if you can't add them, Bins, Scratchman Apu, Sphinx, Film Uda, or Ions are all okay-ish replacements, but they are definitely downgrades. I've also got 4 copies of Jean Bart from the starter deck 10. He's going to help with early ramping. If you're going second and you have him in hand, I do like to use Luffy's effect to jump up to 5 Dawn, play him, use his effect, and then you're up to 6 Dawn on your second turn or the fourth turn overall in the game. Outside of that, I do tend to use him more as a 1k counter, but he does have 5k attack, so it depends on the situation. I'm also running 2 copies of 6c Zoro. I don't know what the promo situation is in the west for this guy, but he does help a lot in yellow matchups, as the banish is really wonderful, especially against Bello Betty. If you don't have access to him, you're going to be alright with 2 more copies of Babanuki from OPL1, or just 2 copies of San Goro from OPL5. I'm sure there are a ton of other vanillas you could fit in this slot, but I tend to like the Wano theming. It's more of just a personal choice. I'm also running two copies of Babanuki. Again, he's just a solid body you can drop early, and the 7k attack puts more pressure on the opponents to make them block or drop two cards from their hand since they can't just counter with a 2k counter in most matchups. Now, I'm not running Magellan, which does tend to be a pretty popular pick, mostly because I don't feel like I gain enough from it to justify not having a counter, 
and going Dawn Minus before Blocker Kid is out. I ran it for a while, but the whole point of him is to incentivize your opponent not to KO him. That way you have a 6k attacker, but that really only works before your opponent hits 8 Dawn since they're no longer afraid of going Dawn Minus at that point, and it also only works if your opponent doesn't have bottom deck removal, like Sakazuki will. I'm also not running Urashima. Uh, the main reason for this is that once I'm getting to 7 Dawn, I'd rather be playing Captain Kid or dividing my Dawn among the attacker. Again, that's more of a preference in the way I play, but I found the deck just works better this way. If you really want him, I just would put him in the Zoro or the Babanuki slot. Now X Drake kind of fits into this category. His Dawn minus skill makes it so your opponent trashes a card from their hand, and that can be occasionally helpful to close out games. However, he's most often used as a 2k counter in this deck, so let's get into those. I've got 3 copies of that X Drake, uh, 3 copies of Khalifa, 4 copies of Fernosuke, 2 copies of Miss Doublefinger, and of course 4 copies of Ulti. This deck runs a lot of 2k counters, but really most of them are interchangeable. The ratios are the way they are just so you're more likely to draw the more useful ones. Uh, if you don't have these, you can pretty much use any other 2k counter in the slots. However, I would say that the Fernosuke's are very helpful. It's kind of the same idea as Kaido, having that rush effect does help for surprise wins, but again, he's more often going to be used as a 2k counter. Then lastly, I'm running two different types of events. I've got two copies of Gum Gum Jet Gatling and two copies of Blast Breath. Gum Gum Jet Gatling is nice in the deck as the extra 1k in counter power will usually mess up your opponent's calculations and save you. Blast Breath is a 1 cost plus Dawn minus 1 for 4k counter power, which is really cost effective. But I'm not running more than two because you don't want to always be going Dawn minus especially on your opponent's turn, since your blocker kid won't re-add the dawn. So that's the deck, but before we get into specific matchups, let's go over some tips and tricks. Tip number one, deciding whether to use Luffy's skill to ramp on your second turn is a pretty big decision, and should be based on the matchup. You need to think about how fast you need to get to 7 or 8 dawn. If you're facing a deck with a strong early game, do you need to get to your blockers or your 7c kid fast, or can you go at a more natural pace and let yourself take the extra hit? This is going to take practice and knowledge of the metagame, so I recommend taking this deck into the simulator and getting a lot of games in before you take this into a tournament. Like I mentioned before, using Luffy's effect can leave you vulnerable, so you do need to make sure it's worth the trade-off. If you need some more metagame knowledge, you can of course check my spreadsheet, and again that's going to be linked down in the description. That can give you some average deck lists and kind of give you a better idea of what to expect when you're facing off against different leaders. Tip number two, you should choose whether to go first or second depending on the matchup. You should usually go first against decks that are pretty aggressive early like red decks and second versus decks that like to use more board removal such as blue or black. The decision comes down to whether you need bodies on the board to keep up or if you can afford to let them take that first attack so that you can have the extra dawn. Tip number three, roll your R's when you play Furanosuke. I can't, I can't do it, sorry. <laughs> but your opponents will be confused, they'll think you're a dork and they will underestimate you. Sorry, I just really wanted to have a third tip here. Trick. Luffy's own aggressive playstyle is the weakness of this deck. What I mean by that is, if you can get past that initial rush of the deck and catch up to 10 Dawn, then you can get the Luffy to run out of resources. On that front, control decks that do well to manage the big threats like Kid and Kaido can really be a hindrance to a Luffy player. Now this deck has a lot of favorable matchups, but one where you might have just a little bit of trouble is Bello Betty. That is one deck that is actually faster than you, and she has a little bit of the advantage. This matchup specifically was why I originally put Wire and Zoro into the deck, and she still has a little advantage, but it is very winnable if you just play it right. First off, you want to prioritize getting some blockers out and keeping 2k counters in your hand. It may take the Bello Betty player a turn or two before they feel comfortable using her effect, so you want to use that to your advantage to just be prepared for that moment. As I mentioned, Wire is great for that, but Queen is also really helpful as he's going to help you prep your counters by giving you that draw too. Second, you don't want to attack at every opportunity early on, and that includes using your leader. You want the Bello Betty player to get low on resources, so you can restrict their gameplay. If you're attacking their life, you're just giving them another card and another trigger, so wait until you have solid control of the board before you start really going at their life. Zoro's kind of an exception to that idea, as the banish prevents the triggers and stops them from gaining anything. On that note, you do want to focus on taking out their characters. They're going to want to go wide, so you should be trying to do the same when possible. Once the characters have attacked, they'll go back to being pretty weak, so they should be easy targets. Just don't forget that they have a decent amount of 2k counters, so factor that into your calculations. Once you get up to playing 7c Kid, you should be in a great spot and be able to sweep from there. I wouldn't ramp in this matchup unless you only have 5c blockers in hand. 
In that case, using Luffy once is fine, but your focus really isn't on speeding through this match. You're actually trying to hinder their pace instead of pushing past them. Versus Red Zoro, you definitely got the advantage. You want to get the blockers out for the rush characters, but once you have your 7C kid, it just really messes them up, as each of their attacks will need an extra dawn. On top of that, I do like to bluff a little bit by leaving a dawn or two open. That way they're just going to spend more resources trying to work around a counter card that isn't really there. Uh, once their characters attack, you should be able to kill them pretty easily, and you've got enough 2k counters to handle that initial rush. I usually ramp 1-2 to two times versus Zoro, just so I can get to Kid and Kaido faster. Versus Red Green Law, you should also be fine. It's similar to the Zoro strategy, but you'd put a little bit more emphasis on going wide. Uh, they can't really deal with your big guys, and even the 6k attackers are a little much for them in large numbers, so go wide and keep some pressure on their board. Keep attacking characters whenever possible as well. Just try to keep them from getting up to 5 characters, but even if they do, you can just take out the Zoro or the Law later. Versus Katakuri, he's actually got the advantage here. Uh, he doesn't mind getting hit since he can just activate his triggers, and because he has so much offensive pressure with his leader skill, you get put into a defensive position really early. Uh, even with Kid out there boosting your leader's attack, a Katakuri with one Dawn can still get over you. Plus, their big hitters like Big Mom and 8C Katakuri are enough to deal with your big guys. Out of all the matchups, I'd say that this one is the hardest. The best thing you can do is get your blockers out early, ramp once at most, and try to hope Banish Zoro plus maybe a surprise rush character can push back against your opponent. Versus Queen, it's a little bit of an annoying matchup and they have the advantage. They have a lot of blockers and a lot of character removal, plus some strong bodies in the late game. That means you end up with a lot of wasted dawn since they just send stuff like Kid back to the deck before you can really get the chance to make use of them. In this matchup, feel free to ramp two times, maybe even three if you feel like you can push for game soon. You want to go wide so that they have to use more cards to remove your characters, and you want to be as aggressive as possible. You want to try to push to take the game before they can get up to 10 dawn and start dropping their big threats. Versus Sakazuki, it can really go either way. They have great removal, but this deck runs enough higher cost characters that it should take them 2 cards to remove most of your threats. In the meantime, you should be able to put pressure on them with a constant stream of big dudes. It's not an easy match, but I recommend taking a pretty aggressive playstyle versus them. Force them to deal with your characters and keep taking life from them as much as you can. Ramping early is okay, but I'd stick to ramping only once most of the time. Versus Anel, it can also go either way, but this decklist in particular has a pretty good time versus Anel decks. If you ramp, they shouldn't be able to use Gadatsu to remove anything except maybe Wire. Plus, you have enough bodies to go wide and just keep poking at them. Both kids are super helpful in this matchup, and your opponent is likely going to try to take out the 7C1 as soon as they can. Try to counter to save it and then swing at the big threats. As with any Anel matchup, you really want more attacks over bigger attacks. In the mirror match, you have to be really careful. A lot of who wins this one comes down to who manages their dawn better. Whether you ramp or not will depend a lot on your hand and what your opponent decides to do. I often try to prioritize getting blocker kid out there, that way I don't fall behind on dawn. Versus red and purple Luffy, you actually have the advantage, which kind of seems odd on the face of it since they have access to a whole nother color. However, your leader's ability to ramp is far superior, so you'll be able to outpace them. On top of that, having 7C Kid will make it so you have the same amount of power as their leader. Plus they have less life and all of that combined together means you can rush to get to your big guys a lot faster and then use them and your leader to keep poking at the red purple Luffy until they run out of counters. I would ramp 1-2 to two times here. And versus green Uda, she's got the advantage. What can I say about that? Sorry, I like Uda. She's really good against pretty much all the big meta decks. She's not going to be out in the west as of me making this video, but her ability to go wide is going to punish you from ramping too much. When it comes to taking on Uda players, you really need to target their board and try to keep your 7C Kid and Kaido alive. And that's pretty much it. If you've got any questions, you can leave them down in the comments below. So the channel has absolutely been exploding since the Sakazuki and Anel guides release, so I just wanted to take this moment to say how grateful I am for that. We actually broke 4,000 subscribers on my birthday, which was a really nice surprise. So thank you everybody. I'm going to keep doing my best to bring you all some good One Piece content. Now my name is Waffles the Asian Yen Bear, and I'm really happy. See ya!